If you're a regular viewer, then you'll know that I have a series of videos to look at how Batman the Animated Series took established comic book supervillains and reimagined them for a modern audience. In today's video, I'm actually going to do the opposite. I'm going to look at a character that was introduced in Batman the Animated Series and show how she's developed over time. The subject of today's video is Nora Freeze, the wife of Mr. Freeze. Now I know what you might be thinking, why are you talking about her? Where's your Mr. Freeze video? You haven't done a Mr. Freeze video yet, what are you talking about? Well, in my opinion, Mr. Freeze has been done to death and there are loads of other great videos out there that look at how Paul Dini took a one-note cult-themed villain from the comics and gave him a compelling tragic backstory. But one thing that isn't as widely discussed is his wife, Nora Freeze. Broadly speaking, I really like what Paul Dini did with Mr. Freeze, and I'm glad that Nora exists. She was an entirely original creation made specifically for the show. But there's something a little troubling about the way she's been used in both the show and the comics that I want to talk about. First things first, let's talk about Batman the Animated Series, my favourite. We are introduced to Nora Freeze in the episode Heart of Ice, and her main defining character trait is that she is deathly ill, and has been placed in a cryogenic stasis pod by her scientist husband, Victor. As I'm sure we all know, the experiment is interrupted by a heartless businessman, Ferris Boyle. Get it? Boyle, as in really hot, versus freeze, as in really cold. It's a pun. There is a scuffle, and Victor is doused in chemicals, transforming him into Mr. Freeze. Victor seems to have little concern for himself, however. Instead, he crawls over to his wife's container and screams her name. This short section tells us pretty much everything we need to know about Victor Freeze. He's a smart guy, and he loves his wife so completely that he puts her ahead of everything else. Believing his wife to be dead, and now unable to survive outside of sub-zero temperatures, Mr. Freeze plots revenge against the heartless Boyle, but is foiled by Batman. It's not until one of the final episodes of the series, Deep Freeze, that we learn that Nora isn't quite as dead as we thought. Nora's body is in the possession of Walt Disney, I, I mean Grant Walker, who offers to help revive her on the condition that Mr. Freeze helps him escape death by undergoing the same chemical bath that created Mr. Freeze. You're possibly thinking that I've spent way too much time talking about Mr. Freeze when this video is supposed to be Nora. Well, the reason I haven't gone into more detail into Nora's character is the fact that she has no character in the show. She is essentially an object whose existence serves only to drive Mr. Freeze's actions in the story. And I feel really conflicted about this. Even when Nora is eventually revived in Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero, we never see her. Once she's awake, that's it, she's gone. We never hear her speak. We never see the color of her eyes. We never hear what she thinks about what happened to her husband. We don't even hear about what she thinks about what's happened to her. She is a perpetually static object, almost like Sleeping Beauty. All we know about her is that she is a petite blonde woman, her husband's name is Victor, and she's deathly ill. Part of the reason for this, according to Bruce Tim and Paul Dini, is that Nora was supposed to be dead from the outset, as in stone cold deceased with no chance of revival. And that knowledge makes the final scene from Deep Freeze all the more heartbreaking. Freeze had the chance to potentially revive his wife, but the cost was too dear, and as such, he's left kneeling in front of her floating corpse, begging for forgiveness. We see further, more explicit references to this in Paul Dini and Glenn Murakami's White Christmas short story in the Batman Adventures Holiday Special comic book, which would eventually be partially adapted into the new Batman Adventures episode, Holiday Nights. As we can see, Nora is dead and buried. Gone. The reason why they could be so explicit in the comics is they didn't have the same restrictions as the TV show. Broadcast standards and practices were incredibly strict on what they would and would not allow. It's why whenever someone fell from great height, they'd usually land in a tree or a conveniently placed pool of water. Although the show frequently pushed the bar, dead wives were not allowed. But in the tie-in comic books, it was fine. However, all of this was derailed a few years later when the animated movie Sub-Zero came out. Originally, this film was going to be a story about Bane, but a late-in-the-day change meant that they had to rewrite the entire film to better synergize with the cinematic release of Batman and Robin. As such, writer Randy Rogel put together this story. At this point, I, I want to point out that the film was made without the involvement of Bruce Timm, Paul Dini or Alan Burnett, arguably the main architects of BTAS. It was made by Randy Rogel, Boyd Kirkland and Haven Alexander, who were all alumni of Batman the Animated Series, so they were very capable creators. However, both Bruce Timm and Paul Dini have been critical of the decision to revive Nora, emphatically stating that she was supposed to be dead. 
This brings me to the main point of the video, discussing Nora Freeze in relation to a long-standing trope in the media. Let's talk about fridging. What is fridging, you ask? Well, fridging, also known as women in refrigerators, is shorthand for a sexist trope named after 1994's Green Lantern 54, in which the hero returns home to find his girlfriend, Alexandra DeWitt, has been murdered by one of his enemies and has had her corpse shoved in the fridge. Essentially, it describes an act of violence being perpetrated against women to serve the purpose of spurring the male character on to furthering the narrative. I'd argue that Nora Freeze is the original woman in the refrigerator because Heart of Ice predates that Green Lantern comic by almost two years, and she was actually frozen. Wives and daughters have been used as a narrative device for revenge for centuries. Hello, Helen of Troy. And I have to admit, I am astounded that there wasn't an academic term for this before this Green Lantern comic. At least if there was one, I've not been able to find it. If you know better than me, let me know in the comments. Outside of Nora being the wife of Mr. Freeze, what do we know about her? What is she like? Well, we can infer that she liked the snow and dancing, based on the fact that Mr. Freeze treats his musical ballerina snow globe as a substitute for Nora throughout the series. Outside of that, there's nothing else to her in BTS. The tie-in comics are slightly better in that regard, although I am going to be briefly critical of my beloved Batman Gotham Adventures comics. Issue number five, written by Ty Templeton, revolves around Nora's former doctor and new husband being kidnapped by Grant Walker to work on sparing him from becoming a head in a jar like Mr. Freeze. Nora isn't seen at all in the issue, outside of a single panel depicting Mr. Freeze's origin. Everybody keeps talking around her like she's a piece of furniture and not a human being. While that is pretty faithful to the show and Sub-Zero, it's a missed opportunity to add some depth and personality to her. It took four years for Nora to appear again in Gotham Adventures number 51, written by Jason Hall. In this issue, almost a decade after Heart of Ice first aired, Nora can be seen walking around and speaking. Now, I won't spoil the twist of the issue, but this is the first time Nora is given any character traits of her own, and even then it isn't that much. She has a final appearance in Batman Adventures volume 2 number 15, also written by Jason Hall. Nora spends much of this issue trying to track down Mr. Freeze and rekindle their relationship. And it's a solid issue, but the groundwork laid in this comic was never followed up on. Nora next appears in Paul Dini and Alan Burnett's Batman Adventures Continue number 4, where it is revealed that she had suffered a relapse from her disease and has passed away, resetting her back to the status as an object that drives Mr. Freeze. I do agree that Mr. Freeze's characterization in the new Batman Adventures, when Nora is alive and well, paled in comparison to his appearances in BTAS. With her now safe and recovered, Freeze's motivations feel hollow to me. There's no hope for me, or you, or your city. Everyone's going to feel my loss. Nora is one of a handful of characters that made their debut in BTAS and found their way to the mainline DC Comics. She made her first in-continuity appearance in Batman Mr. Freeze special from 1997. Now this is the story that officially gave Mr. Freeze the same origin as his animated counterpart, with some added context. Although Deanie made the point of definitively killing Nora off, no ambiguity, she is dead, deceased, gone. However, multiple crises and continuity resetting events have taken place since then, and the Freeze's origin has changed. In the New 52 era, Nora was revealed to be a random woman that was frozen decades ago that the lonely Victor Freeze obsessed over. Although this was quickly retconned, Nora is currently running around as Mrs. Freeze, a supervillain in her own right, which, to be honest, I don't really enjoy. I also really don't like that Bruce Wayne was the heartless industrialist that interfered in Victor Freeze's experiments now, but that's a topic for another time. Despite not enjoying some of the changes that they have made, I, I am glad that Nora has been given the opportunity to be fleshed out. But I just wish she had the opportunity to be a normal person rather than another deranged lunatic. And that's why I'm so fond of the recent One Bad Day Mr. Freeze comic. This was released towards the end of 2022. Firstly, I always get a big kick out of seeing references to BTAS in the main comics. Look how good that costume looks. But we also get some insight into the lives of Victor and Nora before she was frozen, and things were not quite as rosy as we might have imagined. Freeze is a jealous and possessive partner that has an antisocial streak running right through him. I particularly like this scene where Nora asks Victor if he is going to put her through the procedure for her benefit or his. And based on his reaction, I think we know the answer. Having said all of this, I find myself wondering why Paul Dini was so adamant that Nora shouldn't 
be a fully fleshed out character with their own thoughts, feelings, dreams and desires. Why is it that upon writing Batman Adventures Continue, he killed Nora off panel? We didn't even get to see her die. One thing I want to make really clear is that I'm not suggesting that Paul Dini is an ignorant sexist. Dini is generally well regarded for writing strong, progressive female characters, even if they are sometimes a little over-sexualized for my tastes. And I'm not suggesting that using this trope is necessarily a bad thing, or that we need to put some sort of disclaimer ahead of Heart of Ice before people watch it. I'm just struggling to understand why Nora was essentially objectified. The inescapable conclusion I've reached is that Nora was always intended to be an object, something that motivated Mr. Freeze, something for him to obsess over, something to force him to wallow in self-pity. Any character development on her part could potentially take away the character development they had built for Mr. Freeze, or at the very least, alter it. As a viewer, we can also project onto Nora, essentially see what we want to see in her. To some, she may appear fragile, in need of protection. To others, she may be an object of desire, forever out of reach, a symbol of loneliness, and so on. I still feel very conflicted about Nora. Heart of Ice is one of my favourite episodes, and I find Mr. Freeze's story really compelling and relatable. Don't send me to Arkham, please. But at the same time, I am uncomfortable with Nora's lack of characterization, And I have to wonder if perhaps that was the point all along.